I have two computers in front of me. I have an M1 MacBook Air, the base spec, which cost me £999. And I have a 16 inch MacBook Pro from 2019, which cost me about three and a half thousand pounds, pretty much fully spec'd out. Which one is quicker with Final Cut Pro? Welcome back to Marketless Reviews. This is a little video that I decided to put together completely off the cuff, if I'm completely honest, but also because I have just got the MacBook Air uh, with the M1 chip. And at some stage, I'm gonna do a full review. I wanna spend a bit more time with it before I do that. I wanna get used to it and just give it a proper thorough test. But I just thought today, what the hell, let's do a little bit of a test with Final Cut. Now, you may know what Final Cut is. If you don't, it's a video editing program, which I use, lots of video editors use, lots of creators use on YouTube, and it's used to a degree in the professional field as well. I use Final Cut daily, pretty much, and I, for the last year, I've used this MacBook Pro 16 inch, and it is superb. You can watch my review. I'll put the link up here somewhere, um, and it's a fantastic machine, but it's very expensive. Now, Apple have just released their M1 line of chips, which are gonna replace eventually wholesale the Intel chips they put into their, their MacBooks and into their iMacs, etc. Now there's loads of benchmarks and things out there. I'm not gonna do that. If you watch this channel, you know I don't do benchmarks, but I'm genuinely interested to see how it performs in the real world. So today I thought, what the hell, let's do a test with Final Cut. I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna basically do some very simple color grading, and I'm then gonna export some footage. Simple as that. It's the exact same piece of footage. It's 4K, 10 minutes long. That's it, nothing fancy. It's running on the same version of Final Cut Pro. Everything is the same, basically, apart from the machine that I'm doing it on. So one of them cost me 999 pounds. This is the base spec. So this is the M1 MacBook Air. There's no fan in there. It's got eight gig of RAM. It's got a 256 gig hard drive. It's got the seven core processor in terms of the graphics. It's just the base level spec. You can't get a cheaper M1 MacBook than this. This, however, is the Intel 16 inch MacBook Pro. It cost me three and a half thousand pounds. It's got an i9 Intel eight core processor in there. It's got 32 gig of RAM. It's got the best graphics card you can get for that machine. It's a bit of a beast, to be honest. Um, but that, that's, to me, already that's fascinating. The fact I'm gonna do the exact same task on these two machines and see how they perform. Now, I haven't done this yet. This is completely off the cuff. The reaction you get from me today is gonna to be live. And I haven't really looked at many of the benchmarks when it comes to doing this kind of work. So it's a bit of an unknown. So yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do on both of them is just some light color grading. So I've got this footage and again, I'm not gonna do anything, anything special with it. I'm using the built-in Final Cut plugins. Nothing has been added, it's just as it is. So yeah, this is what I would normally do. I would come in, I'd bring up the, the kind of spectrum analyzer. I'll bring up the highs a little bit there. If you're interested, this was recorded with a Sony A7S II, quite an old camera, but it's a fantastic video camera for, particularly for, for 4K. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna tweak this a little bit. It's looking quite nice. Now, whenever you do anything in Final Cut, like color grading, it puts this little Thing, these little dots at the top of the screen, which basically indicate that it needs to render that footage. So the changes that I'm making, it hasn't applied to that footage yet. And this is where you start to see how fast and how powerful the computer is that you're using in terms of how quickly it does that. Now I've not finished yet, I will just do a little bit more, perhaps bring up the saturation a little bit there. That's all looking good. Now, if I take my hand away, at the top left of the screen, we can see the little render thing here. And this will tell me that it's rendering basically, and it gives me a percentage. Now I'm not gonna time this, I'm just gonna have a look at it and see how it goes. Let's let that finish. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So same bit of footage. I'm gonna do pretty much what I did before. Let's just um, bring that up, bring the highs up, get a bit more contrast there. There we go, nice. Bit of that. I mean, again, we can see that it's put this, these little dots here to indicate that it needs to render that. Uh, the MacBook Air is still going, it's at 27% now. Okay, um, okay, I'm pretty happy with that, I think. Let's have a look, yeah, all looking good. So, let's let that go. So at the moment we're at 38%. I did start this, admittedly, a little while ago, and we're at 11% now with the MacBook 16 inch. Okay, so they're still chugging along. We're only probably a couple of minutes into this. I'll be honest though, this M1 is screaming along. This is quick. 
This is really quick. I know it had a head start, and I know that. I did think that the 16 inch would catch up a bit quicker than this, if I'm totally honest. This is genuinely amazing, I think. Right, last bit, done. So the Air has finished. The M1 Air has done, and I reckon it did that a couple of minutes, probably. The 16 inch, again, it was a little bit later starting by probably about a minute or so, 70%. It's already slower, so this, three and a half thousand pounds machine is slower at rendering some color grading compared to the base level, the base spec M1 MacBook Air. And also, it's warmish, but it's not boiling hot. That's really, really hot. Like, you can't leave your hand on there for much longer. It's finished the render. Now I reckon that took five minutes. That took about two minutes. Wow, I'm genuinely, knocked back by that. That is, that is impressive. Really impressive. Wow. So the next test I'm gonna do is to export that 10 minutes of 4K footage to the desktop on either machine. Again, it's not particularly intensive, but it is the kind of thing which does spin up the fans a bit on the, on the, on the, on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And it's fairly, fairly processor intensive and it's just quite a good benchmark really. And I'm gonna time this, I've got my timers ready, we're gonna do it. So we're gonna start, let's start the 16 inch first actually. So here we go, click save, start. That's gone. Let's start the MacBook Air. Save, start. Away we go. Now immediately, the 16 inch is ahead. It's at 5% and actually the MacBook Air is doing nothing at the moment. It's just sitting at 0%. Well, this is interesting, isn't it? 9%, 1%. So the 16 inch MacBook Pro, it's just over a minute in now. It's at 20% of the export. And again, about a minute in, the M1 is at 2%. That's interesting. 3%, 24%, 25%. Three percent. This is really interesting. I, I'm I'm surprised by this as well. I thought, given how quickly this rendered, that it would probably do the same thing and beat the 16-inch with the export, but it's not. It's much much slower. And just to reiterate, the exact same settings in terms of the export, the same bit of footage, it's all rendered. Thirty-nine percent, five percent. Wow, we might be here for some time. You won't, I will. It's finished. So the M1 MacBook Air with eight gig of RAM finished that output of a 4K 10 minute video file from Final Cut Pro in 13 minutes, eight seconds versus five minutes, 10 seconds with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now what was interesting was that I've been screen recording both of these Macs again with the exact same settings. When I stopped screen recording on the MacBook Air while it was exporting, the export sped up and it actually sped up quite significantly. But it was a fair test because when the 16 inch MacBook Pro was exporting from Final Cut Pro, it was also doing that screen recording. So they were both doing the exact same thing, but for some reason, the 16 inch MacBook Pro handled both those tasks simultaneously much, much better than this, much quicker, you can see there. But I'll be honest, when I did quit that screen recording on the M1 MacBook Air, it was actually pretty quick exporting that footage. So it might be worth me doing a little test at some stage with them both doing it without the screen recording, but I won't do that today because um, I think this has been an interesting little experiment and I'm gonna leave it at that. I am gonna do a proper review of this M1 MacBook Air. I'm not gonna say anything else about it at the moment. I've got all sorts of thoughts already. This has been very interesting, but if you wanna see what I really think of this base level spec M1 MacBook Air, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. If you've got a bit more time now, carry on watching for a link to the review of the 16 inch MacBook Pro that I did a few weeks back. It's had no end of fantastic comments. People seem to still really be interested to see what this MacBook can do despite the M1, M1 range that's come along. So yeah, if you wanna see if it's worth buying one of these now, which I think it probably is, keep watching. In the meantime, thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you next time.